High-end cars typically come with alloy wheels, rather than basic steel wheels covered with a plastic hubcap. They're also known as mag wheels, because when they first came out, they were made of an alloy of magnesium. These days they're made of an aluminium alloy, which is far more durable. Aluminium alloy wheels not only look nicer than standard wheels, they're also a fraction of the weight, and therefore require less energy to rotate. This can contribute to greater fuel efficiency, as well as better handling, acceleration and braking. Manufacturing begins with a high-grade alloy, containing 97% aluminium. A furnace heats the ingots to over 700 degrees Celsius. They liquefy in about 25 minutes. The molten aluminium then flows directly to a mixer, where they inject argon gas, which enables them to remove the hydrogen. This increases the density, making the aluminium less porous when solidified. After adding powdered titanium, magnesium and other metallic elements to further strengthen the aluminium, they blend in flux, a chemical which draws aluminium oxide to the surface. They skim off this impurity along with the flux, and the liquid aluminium is ready for casting. The wheel mold is made of high strength steel. It's actually a set of three molds. The upper mold, which forms the inside face of the wheel. The four part side mold, which forms the wheel's edge. And the lower mold, which forms the outer face. This contains the design and is the most intricate mold. It takes three to four weeks to produce a mold. Computer simulations check the flow and temperature of the liquid aluminium in order to prevent casting defects. The casting machine is designed to fill the mold from the bottom by pressurized injection. Injecting upward through the bottom rather than pouring downward through the top reduces the risk of air bubbles, which cause defects. Just before casting, the molten metal flows through a filter sheet made of a ceramic material resistant to high temperatures. This traps additional aluminium oxide. Once cast, the aluminium takes seven to 10 minutes to solidify. Then the mold automatically opens, releasing the newly cast wheel. It's submerged in lukewarm water for a few minutes, cooling it enough to be handled. The wheel then undergoes a complex heat treatment process that takes 12 hours from start to finish. First, it's heated to just under 500 degrees Celsius. This rearranges the molecular structure, strengthening the metal. Next is what's known as quenching. They submerge the wheel in water at 80 degrees Celsius for 30 seconds. This locks in that new strength. Then they reheat the wheel this time to 180 degrees for nine hours to further stabilize the metal. The wheel doesn't come out of the mold in perfect condition. There's excess material around the edges that has to be trimmed off. So they mount the wheel on a computer guided lathe. It precision machines the sides, refining them to within half a millimeter of the measurements specified in the technical drawings. For the more intricate face of the wheel, the edges are manually trimmed with a blade. The shape is now finalized, and it's time to test the wheel to make sure it's airtight. They seal the inner rim of the wheel, submerge it in water, and pump in air. If any air bubbles appear, that means there's a pinhole in the metal, or some shrinkage, and the wheel would fail inspection. If there are no bubbles, the wheel proceeds to the painting line. First, a base coat, then a color coat, which can be anything from classic silver or black to a snazzier shade. Then a clear coat to protect the paint and prevent corrosion. The factory randomly selects wheels to test for performance and wear, and workers install the decorative cap that covers the center hub. And these aluminum alloy wheels now look as good as they perform. That is, until you scrape them up against the curb when parking. <laughs>